It's not often I pull up to a boat and I got their hand in the water. Unless you're Bill Dance, you got something going on over here, big dog? Gosh! Let's start today. Holy macaroni, yeah, dude. Right Are you right kidding here. me? Look at that one right Holy there. That's how you start the day dude. off, man. Are you kidding me? Uh, you want to hold him? How much is he? 1.63. He looks like 17 pounds. Yeah, got full of, got a full belly. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're after today, right there. Them big, big-bodied fish today. <laughs> let's watch this. Let's watch this getaway here. Go back and reproduce, girl. Ooh, yeah. Woo. Y'all stick around. Hopefully, we're gonna get into them today. All right, all right, all right. So last week they wanted black and chartreuse. That's all they wanted. So I got, they didn't have the ones I wanted, but they had this a Mr. Crappy set. So I'm gonna grab this black jig chartreuse tail and I'm gonna put it on an eighth ounce jig head. It's a smaller body profile than I usually use, but this should be, should be okay. So we're just gonna get that situated like that. There we go. We're gonna come up here. And there seems to be a set at about 25 feet. So I'm gonna cast it out. Water temperature today, 57 degrees, which is good news. We pushed off of it just a little bit. It's a little bit further away than I want it to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push forward over towards it just a little bit. I want the whole pile to be at about 15 feet. That would be ideal. So about right there. So I'm gonna spot lock right there. And then I'm gonna drop down. There we go. Now I'm gonna drop down on them like that. Let the live scope get situated there. Or I'm sorry, that's the trolling motor. And I'm just gonna drop down. I got a camera mount, so sorry if it's, we're trying to figure it out. So, got a couple big, a couple other ones on the back side. So I'm gonna drop down on the back side here. Like right there. And guys, I tell you all the time, one of the first things you gotta do is figure out A, what they, the, the method that they want is in the presentation of the bait, and then B, the color that they want. So I'm gonna throw this black and chartreuse a couple more times and I'm gonna switch it up to something else to see if maybe they want some other color. All right, let me try mermaid. Let me throw them a little lighter of a color here and see if maybe they want something just a touch lighter than that black color. And I can see them down there, you know, swimming around, hanging out, doing all kinds of fishy things. Especially with water temperatures being 56, 57, between 56 and 58 degrees, I can guarantee you these fish are starting to move up. They're starting to get ready to spawn. I got one. There we go. Finally. I thought it was a branch. Oh, that's a dandy. Oh, that's a that's a flower. Holy toad, dude. <laughs> I'm trying to be quiet because there's like seven boats around me. <laughs> oh, I'm a that's a freaking toad. Ah, that's what we're after. <laughs> See that, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we're after. Them big ones. Them big girls full of eggs. See that joker? Ready to go. But that's what we're after right there. And she, and she's right where I thought she'd be, right in that daggum opening. Ah, that doesn't get old. I don't care who you are. That's fantastic. All right, big girl. Appreciate you. Thank you. She wanted that mermaid. I mean, as soon as it got into that crook of the tree, she was she inhaled it. She said, "Yep, there's breakfast." Yeah, it looks like they're hanging out. So this thing is like a it's a it's a tree. I'll show you. You can see right there, it's like a tree. And these fish, see them right here, they're hanging out right here in the crook. There's one leaving now, but they're hanging out right here in the crook of this tree, and here comes one now. So, what I'm trying to do is land it right in that V, basically. And that's where I just caught that other one at. It was right in that same spot. So, I'm gonna drop down in there like that. All right, I'm gonna go down in the tree. Dang it, right in their face. Uh oh, had one swim up to it. Oof, she tickled it. It felt like a little short strike there. Felt like a little short strike. Right there. Come on, big girl. Come on. Come on, biggin. Come on. Come on. <laughs> it gets. Oh, 
There we go. <laughs> Shoot. Oh, I had it. I had that girl. Finally, I had it. And she spit it. She took it and then she spit it. So, I honestly think it's something with the way that the tails are designed. I genuinely think that these jigs work so well because of the way the tails flutter in the water. That's my honest opinion. I could be completely off on that, but guys, I'm telling you. This style of jig, just with that long, flowy tail, that's why the pendulum, I always try to do the pendulum and it works so well for me personally, I think, is because that tail, it just gives it, you know, because crappie are real reactive fish. So they see that tail and they're like, man, I gotta have that. And so you cast it out, you know, past the structure and you let it flutter past the structure, come on through it. And before you know it, you get hooked up. A lot of bass in here. All right, okay, okay, okay. All right, let's go to the next spot. I'll pick you up at the next stop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's drop down on them. So what I'm going to do with this pile, a little bit different. I'm going to do a vertical presentation. So I'm just going to vertical jig it straight up and down, see if maybe that's what they want. My dad's across the lake. He's caught another two-pounder. I'll drop a picture of that right here. And uh, he's, he's, he's mopping them up over there, I guess. He can only find the big girls today, which is funny. Which is, you know, it's what we're after. You want to catch the big ones. Let's see if this big girl wants to bite here. I got one coming right at it right now. Let's see if she'll take it. Nope. I guess I hit her because she skedaddled quickly. There's another one though. Let's see if I can get her to bite it. I'm trying to snipe these bigger individual fish that are off of the pile. See if maybe it's something. Well, my live scope just died. <laughs> it is dead. D-E-D -E -D dead. No worries. No worries. I know where the pile is. I know right where the pile is. So I'm going to bring it out at 15 feet and I'm just going to keep on pushing. I'm going to still fish this pile even though I can't see it anymore. We're going to go old school. Take it back to the way it usually is. See if I can't pick a couple up on this pile. So it's a double pronged problem. I have um, <laughs> the battery died here on the live scope on the old live scope. That's on me. I forgot to charge it. That's on nobody else but me. <laughs> I was doing a thing where I would try to see, I was trying to see how many trips I could go uh, before it was completely deadlined. And I thought that I had charged it the last trip. Clearly I didn't. So the answer is five. I can go five trips and about two hours into, the, or an hour into the first trip, or fifth trip, it's gonna be dead. So good news is my dad's across the lake. So I'll probably trailer this boat and then go get on his just because I don't know this lake enough to bank fish. Actually, that's a lie. I'm in the river right now. I'll probably push up into this shallow area of this river, fish that with a slip cork and a bobber, or a slip cork and a jig like we normally do on the kayaks. Um, I'll probably do that for a little bit just to see if maybe I can get into them over there, um, which is right up here. And then if that doesn't work out, then I'll go hop on his boat because he's finding the big ones today. And uh, that would be a pleasure to take part in. So charge your batteries, step number one. Um, and make sure that you, uh, you know, six piece. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. So, didn't prior plan and that's on me. So let's push up in this river. I'm gonna use my bobbers. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get down on some bobber action for a little bit, maybe like an hour or so, just to see if maybe we can get it done um, out there. I'm not saying you cannot fish deep water without live scope, but when you're in 30, 40 feet of water, it really helps, uh, like really helps. <laughs> so go ahead, haters, drop in the comment section. You can't fish without live scope, go ahead. I'm gonna push up in the creeks, fish that, see what's up. Oh yeah, taking it old school. Just gonna slip cork and around these, okay, I'm sorry, spring-loaded cork around these piles and stick up in this shallow up here just to see if maybe they're already pushed a little shallower. This lake is definitely a lot warmer than other lakes that we fish. I would not be surprised if they're already pushed very shallow, like pretty shallow. So just gonna hit a couple of these points here see what we can shake out and then go from there now if you've watched any of my other videos you know i normally don't like fishing spots that are pretty easily accessible by land Th this method anyway but being that we're in the pre-spawn pre stages you gotta do what you gotta do you know so i'm just gonna work this jig right up through here because you know it's the same thing i would do if i was on the kayak or if i was on the bank There we go. Get it right in there. Now I'm just gonna work it around these logs and these overhangs and stuff like that. Got 
the stick. Got the old stick bass. <laughs> Well, this is it, folks. This is real life of a YouTube fisherman. My crap broke, so I got to ride an old rods and reel here to set me up. Oh, never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Oh, I can see the branch. Sorry. I ain't even scared, dude. How about this wind, huh? How deep? Twenty-six feet deep. Lord have mercy, this wind is insane. I don't know. It's only six feet deep out in the middle of the lake, huh? Somebody probably struck it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I saw it on the sides again. Didn't see this thing the other way. Yeah. Well, let me grab a jig head and tie on because I just broke off. I fished, man. What's that mean? What, what am I doing? Watching? Man, that's pretty. That's how good spot lock is. Look, we got our boat spot locked right now in this crazy wind. And they're holding true. And they're holding true and they're keeping a one foot gap like I had mine set to. Pretty cool. <laughs> they're about to slam into each other. <laughs> Well, as y'all can see, I'm back at the house. All right, guys. I uh, I couldn't take the wind anymore. The wind was whooping up on me. I was tired of it. It was beating me up. Didn't want to contend with it. Thanks for hanging out today. Didn't slay them like I wanted to, but still got out on the water. You know, sometimes things go wrong and you just adapt and overcome. Hey, shout out to Waterland uh, Glasses for, for keeping the sun out of my eyes today. Check them out at waterlandco.com. Appreciate y'all for hanging out. I know this is a really weird video. It is what it is. We're going to get back on the dangle tomorrow. Don't worry. But for now, I hope you'll enjoy this video here. And I hope we catch you on the next one. Don't stop the dangle. Peace.